And now, the Pointless Filler players proudly present a scene entitled, Meeting the Future Father-in-Law. Daddy, this is Ewan, my fiancé. How do you do, sir? How do you do? So, you two are getting married, huh? Yes, Mr. McAfee. Ewan and I love each other very much, Daddy. Well, I'm very happy for the both of you. Do you know where you're going to be living after you're married, Jackie? Well, we were hoping here with you for the first few months or so, just until we've saved enough to get a place of our own. Oh, of course, sweetie. Your mother and I are always glad to help and support you in any way we can. And where will you be living, Ewan? Good evening, listeners. It's Owl Stretching Time. And now, here's your host, Frank Macaluso. Thank you, Jordan. Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in once again to Owl Stretching Time. Ah, nuts. If anyone's knocking on my door in the middle of a show, it's never good news. Well, I might as well answer it. Hold on. Hello there. My name is Morgan Kingsley, and I'm your new image consultant. Image consultant? Yes. I'm the woman who's going to make you look good. This isn't going to require me to lose weight, is it? Maybe later. Right now, I want to focus on more important stuff, like your public persona. You know, how the average person sees you, what the public thinks of you. Say, are you on social media? Yeah, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Cool. Give me your phone. Why? I need to see how you're doing in terms of interacting with the public and putting yourself out there. Okay, here you go. Anyway, the city only council- Only 42 tweets? God, that's pathetic! Well, I only got on Twitter this past summer. And most of your tweets are retweets of posts by Who's Line cast members? Where's you? Where's your personality? No wonder you only have 16 followers. Look. Can we maybe talk about this later? I I'm in the middle of doing a show here. Oh, right. Sorry. Anyway, as I was going to say before I was interrupted, there was a meeting of the city council here in Decatur, and, well, it certainly was interesting. Let's take a look at it, shall we? Alright, the ayes have it. The motion to make September 21st Bill Murray Day in Decatur passes. We will now begin our Citizens Forum and invite members of the community to take the podium. Order! Order! One at a time, please! You there, with the purple blouse. You go first. Thank you. Damn it! Are you kidding me? I knew I should have worn my purple blouse. Good evening, esteemed council members. My name is Priscilla Ortiz, I own a bakery near the downtown area, and I would like to request the removal of a fire hydrant from the lawn area in front of my property. You see, I've just finished redecorating my shop, both inside and out, and the fire hydrant simply does not fit anymore. Wait, now, Miss Ortiz, what do you mean the fire hydrant doesn't fit anymore? It clashes, sir. It simply does not fit the new motif that I've selected. It throws the whole thing way off, and I'd like it removed, please. Miss Ortiz, we cannot remove a fire hydrant near your property simply because it clashes with the design of your shop. Do you have any idea how much of the taxpayer's money that would cost? I'm sorry, miss, but we just can't do it. Can I at least have permission to paint it black, then? What? Why black? So it can blend in better with the other decorations. I'm going for a galaxy-type vibe with planets and stars and such. Miss, the whole point of a fire hydrant being bright red is for it to stand out. We can't let you repaint it. I'm sorry. Fine then! I'll just have to move my shop. Again! I don't think there's another decent building left near downtown that I can afford. I guess I'll just have to move my business to Mount Zion, then. We're very sorry to hear that. Next! Order, please! You, sir, in the ill-fitting suit. That was an unnecessary description, but okay. Hello, I'm Frederick Dillon, editor-in-chief of the Decatur Daily Herald Tribune. I'm here to speak out against what I believe to be a spiteful and violent slander campaign against our publication. 
Just this past weekend, someone spray painted the words fake news and liberal snowflake garbage on one of the sides of the building and broke nearly every single window with a baseball bat. Whoever it was wore a very elaborate disguise, so you can't tell who it is in the security footage, but I have a strong hunch on who it is. Have you contacted the police department about all this? Yes, and they were of absolutely no help at all. In fact, the person I spoke to over the phone said we deserved it for our supposedly biased coverage of the gubernatorial campaign. Can you believe that? Mr. Dillon, what is it exactly that you want the city council to do about this? I... Uh, nothing, really. I, I just needed to vent to someone. Okay, then. We'll be moving on. Next, please. All right, third time. Seriously, people, conduct yourselves in a calm, respectful manner. Let's have you go next, sir. You, the one in the jean jacket. Come forward. Hello, my name is Ben Jackson. I'm a full-time patriot, and I would publicly like to congratulate the Decatur Daily Herald Tribune for being Decatur's top provider of fake news in 2018. Ben Jackson, you son of a bitch! I knew it was you posting all those frickin' signs all over downtown! Can I speak, Mr. Dillon? I'll bet you're the one who vandalized our building, too! I ought to kick your ass right here and now! Oh, just cause I disagree with you politically means I'm not allowed to speak? I can't exercise my First Amendment rights when it means you're gonna get offended? You typical liberal snowflake hypocrite. Okay, that's it. That's it. Come here, you. Can someone escort these two out, please? Yes, get them out of here. Come on, you two. Break it up. Break it up. You stay the hell off our property, Jackson, and you shut up about our paper. Only when you stop publishing lies to advance your agenda. I swear to God, I'll kill you one of these days. Get them out of here. Come along, you two. A night at the precinct will calm you down. This I isn't fair! My right to speak. I'm not the criminal here. I'm gonna get Arrest myself him. a cheap lawyer. He's the you vandal. Heard I'm the last victim. Ben Jackson. Next, please. Hello, my name is Laverne Hodges. I would like to express my concern over a show that Pipe Dream Studio Theater is planning on producing titled Hand to God. If any of you are unfamiliar with that play, it's basically about a socially awkward teenage boy in Texas whose sock puppet gets possessed by the devil and begins to bring chaos and unrest in his life. Is the issue with the content of the play? Is there something in the show you consider objectionable or inappropriate? Heck no! I just want to make sure they don't hire some dumb hack college kid who doesn't know what the hell he's doing to make the puppets. Now, I happen to own and manage a puppetry troupe that makes its own puppets, and we could offer our services to them. Miss Hodges, pardon my interruption, but I think it would be more constructive if you went to Pipe Dreams and addressed your concern to them, not us. Duly noted. Thank you for your time. Did she just thank us? God, it's been so long since anyone's thanked me for anything. It feels weird hearing those words again. I know what you mean. Next person, please. Hello, my name is Gregory Perkins, and I'm an alcoholic. Sir- Don't you interrupt me! Sir, uh, sir, um... listen to me. Sir, this is not an AA meeting. That's tomorrow. Right now we're having a city council meeting. <laughs> really? Is that what this is? Is it really? Are you all just afraid to admit that you have a problem? Oh, they have a problem, all right. They're puppets of the Clintons and the biased liberal media. Shut up! Shut up, you ignorant nutbag! I will set you and all of your loved ones on fire! Get those two out of here now! And would someone kindly escort Mr. Perkins out of here and get some coffee in his system or something? I'm so sorry about this, everyone. I'm his daughter-in-law. I'll take care of him. Come on, Greg. Let's go home. Thank you very much, miss. Is that the last of them now? I do believe so. Good! Meeting adjourned. I we so so Wanna go to LSB and drink until we can't remember what city this is anymore? Oh, hell yes. Come on, let's go. Now Hang on for just one second, Frank. You there! Come over here! Um, okay. I saw you doing your thing in that last skit. You have got it, girl! In spades! Thanks? I mean, I was just an additional voice. I didn't play any Now the... let's get the two of you together. Uh, okay. Frank, who is this lady? Some chick who said she's my new image consultant. 
I think if we just go along with whatever the hell she's doing right now, she'll shut up and let us go on with the show. Okay. Now, Frank, I want you to take a selfie with, uh... Crystal. Crystal! I love it! Take a selfie with Crystal now. Be cute. Lean in towards each other. Smile a little bit more than that, Frank. Show some teeth, for God's sake! Huh. Never mind. Close mouth smile. And take the photo. Beautiful! Now, give me the phone. This is going on the gram and on Twitter. You can go now, Crystal. I'll talk with you later, honey. After the show. Okay. Miss Kingsley, if you don't mind my asking, just what exactly are you doing? One very effective way of getting yourself noticed is to discover the next big thing. This crystal girl is going to be huge. I can tell. I can see it in her eyes. She's hungry. And she's going to pull you, the man who discovered her, up along with her. Now, I can't rightfully say I just. What the hell, Frank? What is this? Yeah, Celine, what are you talking about? This picture of you and Crystal you posted on Instagram caption, Me and my favorite co-star. I thought you said you never picked favorites. I don't. It was- Don't give me that, you fat sack of crap. Until that pic is deleted, I am on strike. I will be in my dressing room. That's the decatarian- I know it's a dex office. They don't mind me crashing here while I'm on strike. Right, Eric? I suppose it's all right, as long as you don't actually use this as a dressing room. Cool, thanks. No, oh, don't fret over her. You don't need her. Actually, I do. Like, right now, she's in the next sketch. So you cut her character out. She's the main character. Cut the sketch. But then the show will run short. Then replace it with something else. Do I have to do all the thinking around here? I haven't got anything to replace it with. Make something up. I'm no good at improv. Is there anyone around here who is? Well, Brian's in math club. You call that good improv? Hey, my theater big's in math club. Besides, how would you know if they're good or not? You don't even go here. Uh, Frank, are we gonna get started with the next sketch anytime soon? Yeah, I worked really hard to learn how to sing like Enrico Caruso. That sketch has been cut. What? Why? Yeah, Celine's mad at me for an Instagram post I didn't even write. Well, dang. All those vocal lessons for nothing. That's 200 bucks I'll never get back. Look, why don't you just apologize to her, dude? Stop pulling up the show! That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Don't you dare! Do you want your audience to see you as weak and spineless? I want my friend to not be mad at me anymore! Hey, Frank. Uh, we're getting pretty close to the 15-minute mark. <sighs> Well, let's just throw it right to commercial. We will not- Miss Kingsley, what are you doing with my phone now? Yeah, just stirring up a little controversy to get you noticed a little quicker. And post. Wait, wait what do you mean, controversy? Frank, we need to talk. Avenue, DJ Jaybird, what are you two doing here? We just saw your tweet, Frank. How dare you call our show a two-hour-long, annoying piece of claptrap that never makes you not want to retch. Yeah, man, I thought you were cool. I and to think of all those times we shamelessly promoted your program on our program, Devil's Advocate, Tuesday nights at 9, right here on WJMU. Well, no more. Good luck attracting an audience without us. Come on, Jason. I believed in you, man. I thought you were a genuinely good and thoughtful person, but you're you're just a chicken. Cheep, 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 I said cheep. come on. Right, sorry. Coming. They should be ranting about you on Twitter any minute now. Soon, everybody in Decatur and their mother will know your name. And then, before you know it, Hollywood will come a-callin'. Okay, that is it. I have just about had it with you. All you've done in the past 15 minutes is alienate and insult my friends. Hey, you don't need them. You stick with me, and you'll be out of this one-horse town quicker than you can say Ticonderoga. So how about showing me a little more gratitude? I'm getting you noticed. If I get any more noticed, I'm not going to have any more friends, and then I'm not going to have a show. Now get out and get out now! Fine. If that's how you feel, I'll leave. Just let me leave my card with Crystal. Hey, Crystal? You stay away from Crystal. You stay away from this station. Stay away forever! Okay. But be warned. At any time I want, I could make your life a living hell. I just need to say the word. And you'll never eat in this town again. Good luck. Well, now I've got to track down Jaybird and Avenue and explain all of this to them. And to Yasseline. 
We will now pause for station identification, followed by a brief message from one of our sponsors. You're listening to WJMU 89.5, The Quad. Insurance that won't replace the value of your new car? You're better off throwing your money right into the harbor. Huh. Oh, I'm probably going to regret that. You bet your ass you are. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say Wait, will... Wait, I'm getting arrested for this? We don't take littering very lightly here, sir. Don't worry, though. You probably won't serve any jail time. Most likely, you'll just have to do some community service. What kind of community service? You'd probably be put on harbor cleanup duty. Forty hours at least. You mean they'd put me on a garbage scow and make me scoop up all the garbage in the harbor with a net? Pretty much, yeah. Well, maybe not with a net. A definitely no boat. I'd have to swim in that water? No! With Liverwurst Mutual Car Replacement, we'll replace the full value of your car. But we can never replace the 40 hours you'll be spending cleaning up a New York harbor with nothing but your bare hands. <laughs> Poor sucker doesn't even actually live there. Liverwurst, 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 Liverwurst. God, I hate this jingle. Shh, sorry. So it was that image consultant lady who wrote that post. Not me. I I've deleted it, and I've posted a retraction. I'm really so sorry about all this. This whole thing sounds incredibly far-fetched, if you ask me. Then again, a lot of things way more ridiculous than that have happened on your show before. I guess we forgive you. Just don't let it happen again. Oh, don't worry. Next time someone knocks on that door in the middle of my show, I'm ignoring them. Good. Oh, and you're back on the air. I am? Oh, hey. <coughs> well, uh, I've still got to talk Yasaline out of the deck office, so while I do that... Here's a look at the hot-button issues of the day on Roundtable. Good evening, I'm Michael Kilgallen, and I'm desperately wondering how this train wreck of a show has not been cancelled yet. If there is a god, he clearly hates me and loves to see me suffer. On tonight's panel, we have popular stand-up comedians Valerie Diaz and Kenny Jones, right-wing conspiracy theorist and overall butt-wipe Dick Pickford, hey! and a taxidermized deer. Our topic this evening is the overall state of comedy getting better or worse. I know, I've got a few things to say about this subject. I know you do. Let's start off with you, Mr. Jones. Oh, well, that's typical. You never let me talk first. The last time I let you talk first, you went on a 20-minute off-topic rant that contains so many ethnic slurs, I thought I was in the YouTube comments section. Now, Mr. Jones, what do you feel about the comedy of today as compared to the comedy of the past? Well, I think comedy is fine nowadays. It's different from where it was before, but you can always find somebody who can make you laugh if you know where to look. I guess it kind of sucks that we can't tell some jokes anymore, but- Exactly! Comedy nowadays is too restricted! Excuse me, sir, but- and it's all because of these easily offended liberal Ivy League millennials who keep wanting the funny out of Hollywood! Mr. Pickford- People nowadays are too sensitive! You say the wrong thing and a lynch mob comes after you. Back in my day, you didn't have to tiptoe around some precious little snowflake's feelings. You were allowed to call a spade a spade! Now- I'm gonna stop you, you right there before you get this station in trouble with the NAACP. Miss Diaz, what do you feel about where comedy is today? I believe that comedy, like any other art form, is constantly evolving to meet the needs of the people. Comedy today is different from comedy 30 years ago, or 10 years ago, or even two years ago, because we needed different things then. Nowadays, with our society being less puritanical and uptight about certain things, comedians are freer to talk about serious issues and to look at them from an analytical standpoint, as opposed to just them making wisecracks and saying, well, that's just the way things are. They can tackle things like racism, misogyny, homophobia, transphobia, politics, systemic oppression, and they can go in depth about it instead of just hinting at it or making innuendos. They can actually take a stand on things and have a chance to explain why they believe what they do. They could be profound and still be able to find humor in the situation because, let's face it, as a species, we are kind of ridiculous. Well, that was very nice. I think that's a perfect place to end this discussion. Hey, you didn't let the last guest talk! It's a stuffed deer head, Pickford! It's an inanimate object! It can't talk! I swear I don't know why the producers keep asking you back, you masochistic bastards! For most of us here at Roundtable, good night! <laughs>
and that's what happened, Yaselina. I didn't post that picture. It, it wasn't even my idea. Well, I guess I overreacted anyway. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't getting the Sashi as a Mita treatment. Hug? No. <sighs> Understandable. And now hey, for- Hey, Frank, you got a minute? I was just about to introduce the next sketch. Then you're not busy. Cool. So I have this cousin- Halt! I already know where this is going. You want me to hire this cousin of yours on as an actor, don't you? No, actually. Oh, good. But you see, he's got this singing group he's in. Oh, God. They call themselves the Heartthrobs, and they recorded a few demos over the summer. I was hoping maybe if you liked them, you'd have them on as a musical guest. <sighs> well, I suppose it's worth giving them a shot. You got one of their demos? Yes. It's all queued up already. It's called Two Chord Love, and it's got this big, sexy hook. You're not a DJ, Emily. Just play the damn song. All right. <laughs> Baby, Baby, I've been thinking about something. He's thinking. Something I've been thinking is how much I love you. He loves you, girl. Baby, Baby girl, girl, when, when I try, try to, to tell, tell you something, something, the something I've been thinking, you know he I haven't got, got a clue. clue. I don't waste no time, time with words, for words or fancy flowers. flowers. That's not me. Not him. I he won't, won't struggle, struggle for hours over what to say. He I lets let his muscles, muscles do the talking. So before you go walking away, wait up there, girl. Hear my two chord love. That's all I got to tell you. Just my two chord love. That's all I got to say. And with my two chord love, I'll use the smallest effort. And my two chord love to get you to stay. Listen to his two chord love. Honey, honey, I had the best thing written. I saw it. It was great. Written down in my little book. He wrote it down for real. But honey, honey, even, even though, though you have me smitten, smitten, like a kit kitten, it got too hard it got to too get hard past the hook, and I'm not no good, good with rhymes, with rhymes or, or teddy bears. And I don't like. He to work, like to work to show, to show I care, cares. but I work out, you know, I he let lets my his muscles, muscles do the talking. talking, so before you go walking away, here comes the hook, girl, hear my two chord love, that's all I got to tell you, just my two chord love, that's all I got to say, and with my two chord love, I'll use the smallest effort in my two-chord love to get you to stay. Listen to his two-chord love. Listen to his two-chord love. I mean, he used some inversions, but it's mostly. Two-chord love. So, what'd you think? Well, the song's pretty good. I, I dig the groove and the lyrics and all the, the backing vocals sound real sweet. But that lead... Uh, <laughs> tell him to keep his trap shut till he's done going through puberty. Or at least tell him to back off the mic. He's practically eating the damn thing. So, you're not gonna have him on? Absolutely not. Aww. Now, I've got to introduce the next sketch. Which you are in, by the way. What? Oh, right, I'll get ready. Good. You know, something we like to do on this program is we do different interpretations of various fairy tales and stories like that. It's a thing we stole from Benny Hill, and we are never giving it back. Tonight, for a lark, I figured it would be fun to try keeping on an overarching theme with our interpretations. So, we're going to be telling this story in the styles of some of America's greatest comedic duos. The story, of course, is Little Red Riding Hood. 
And here is how we believe it would be told by that famous comedic duo from the 50s, Nichols and May. Oh, Elaine, did you hear about poor Red? Hear about it? Of course I heard about it. It was terrible. Wasn't it just the most tragic thing you've ever heard? Absolutely dreadful. I feel so bad for her having gone through all that. And on a weekend, too. That's the worst part of it. Really, it is. The worst part of it. You know, if only she'd made that trip on a Wednesday, the whole thing could have been avoided. Yes, but then she'd have to miss work, and she really can't afford that. Who can? Who can afford it nowadays? That's the sad part. It's all over the papers, you know. I'm not shocked. It's the worst thing to happen in this town in a long, long time. You know, there could be a war tomorrow, and you still wouldn't hear about it. We'd all still be so focused on poor little Red and how she's going to deal with all this now. Exactly. You know, if there were a war tomorrow, you wouldn't see it in any of the papers. Not around here. Oh, no. Not in one of them. Not in a single one of them. I mean, I can barely think about anything else. Me too. I can barely think about it. You know? I can barely think about the coming elections. What coming elections? Exactly. You can't think of them either. It's just... That's how horrible this is. There's an election coming up? Oh, that's not important right now. We're talking about Red here. I know, I know. We're talking about someone we see every day. Now, a politician. You don't see them all the time, now do you? No? No, you don't. I'm glad at least that the wolf is behind bars. Yes. I am glad that he is behind bars and he cannot hurt anyone anymore. Me too. But it makes me wonder. What? It makes me wonder about some of these government officials who've been accused of these awful things. Oh, dreadful. Yes, these horrible, heinous things, and yet they don't seem to be suffering very many consequences for it. I mean, just recently, Kavanaugh... Oh, that was horrible how that all turned out. After that poor woman's testimony, and after all those people coming forward saying he doesn't belong on the Supreme Court, and they just let him in anyway. I don't understand it. Well, you can't very well expect a politician to be held to the same standards as a regular person, now can you? I mean, they're the people who run our country. I suppose not. Exactly. Exactly. Well... Now let's see that story interpreted by a famous duo from the 60s and 70s, Burns and Schreiber. Yeah, it's a taxi cab. Just get in already. All right, cool your jets. I'm getting in. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Take me to Grandma's house. What you call Grandma's house? You know what I mean? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Grandma's house. Where is that exactly? Oh, it's in the corner of Fairview and Grand. All right. I got a great big basket of goodies I got to give to her. She's not feeling too good. No? No, but these ought to cheer her up. Mom baked them for her special. They're all her favorites, what's in this basket. A tisket, hey. a tasket, hey. a green and yellow basket. Hey, 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 hey. No, no singing in the cab. Can't you see the sign? No singing in the cab. I gotta concentrate here. Sorry, pal. Calm down, calm down. I'll stop singing. I know when to shut up. Good. You know, normally I'd just walk to Grandma's house, but some of these neighborhoods have been getting kind of rough, if you know what I mean. I don't. What do you mean by rough? I mean, the situation's getting a little hairy around here. Know what I mean? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Hairy! You, you talking about all the wolves that have been moving in? Yeah. That's a communist plot, you know. I mean, those big eyes they have. All the better to see you with. Yeah, for spying, that's what. Oh, God, you're one of those. Why always me, Lord? Why do they always pick my cab? Hey, pal, don't look now, but you're about to rear-end someone. What? <laughs> ah, jeez, this is coming out of my next 15 paychecks. That's not the least of your troubles, pal. You hit a wolf. Oh, God. Ah, whiplash! Whiplash! I'm suing you for everything you got, you dumb, rotten human! 
See, what did I tell you about them wolves, huh? Didn't I tell you? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Shut up! Oi, Gevolt. And of course, no tribute to the great comedic duos would be complete without an entry from the playbook of Abbott and Costello. Let's see how they would tell a story like Little Red Riding Hood. I'm walking, here's the knee and I'm talking, but you and me, I'm hoping that you come back to me. All right now, Red, you've got your basket all nice and filled up? Yep. And you remember how to get to Grandma's house? Yep. Kinda. Maybe. Look, I'll go over it with you again. You go down what street, and you walk four blocks until you reach which street. Then you turn right, and you'll walk till you hit that street, and then you turn left on that street, and her house will be on the right. Got it? I think so. Can we maybe go over it again? What's confusing you? So, when I start, I go down what street? Yes. Yes what? Exactly. Exactly what? Yes. Ugh, would you please just tell me the name of the street? What street? The street I go down first. What street? The street I'm starting on. What street? The street I walk down first. What street? Why do you keep asking I'm me? I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. What street? I'm asking you what street. That's it, that's the street's name. What is? Yes, that's the street's name. Okay, so. I start on Yes Street, You do then... nothing of the kind! What is the street I'm supposed to start on then? Yes, I keep telling you that! I thought you said it wasn't Yes Street! It's not Yes Street, it's What Street! Would you quit asking me? I'm asking you! And I'm telling you, What Street? Well, go ahead! Go ahead what? Tell me the name of the street! What street? The street I start on! What street? Ugh, let's just move on. <sighs> That's a good idea. I don't want you losing your voice before you get to Grandma's house. Okay, so I go down the first street and you're I walk- You're not walking down first street, you're walking We're down- We're moving on from that! I walk down the street and I turn at which street? Yes! I turn at Yes Street? No! But you just said- You walk four blocks and you turn on which street? That's what I want to know! I'm trying to tell you which street! Then tell me! I just did! What street? That's where you're starting. We're not talking about that. I'm trying to ask you which street I turn at. And I keep telling you, which street? Which street is it? Yes! You said it wasn't yes. It's not yes, it's which street? That's what I keep trying to figure out. Look, let's start from the beginning. Clean slate. Now, you start on what street? I don't know. What'd you say? I said, I don't know. <laughs> of course. How could I have been so stupid? What are you talking about? I don't know Avenue. I don't know her either, but I don't see what that has I to do with. I don't know Avenue. That was the old shortcut we used to take to Grandma's house. Ugh, I'm just going to call an Uber. <laughs> Well, that's about all the time we have for tonight. We hope to be with you all again same time next week. Until then, good night and be safe. That was Owl Stretching Time, starring Frank Macaluso, Brian Barker, Emily Bowes, Yaseline Olvera, Michael Santos, and Antonio Verdera, with special guest stars DJ Jaybird and Avenue of Devil's Advocate, also starring Rachel Banda, Kehlani Bartley, Crystal Claros, Ariane Evans, and Giovanni Tapia. This episode was written, directed, and produced by Frank Macaluso. Two Chord Love was written by Mike O'Mara and featured backing vocals by Isabel Calkins, Olivia Ermiter, Sarah Keo, Ilana Maitano, and Miranda Wood, with Mike O'Mara on piano. This is your announcer, Jordan Comish, speaking.